Hello, everybody. Um, thanks for joining us this Monday for our product Zoom. Today we are doing a product. We're doing our coffee. Uh, we have done this in the past, but it was way back in the beginning. So we have lots of new faces and just, you know, want to touch on some a little bit of new content. Um, so first of all, while we're here, I'm going to make my coffee. Okay. If you have not tried it, you guys have to try this. It's unbelievably delicious and it's just so easy. So I'm just going to get my scoop. I already have my warm water. Hopefully it's not too hot. And I like mine to taste a little stronger, so I don't use as much water. Mixer. Yeah, I get a lot of questions on uh, wow. how it tastes, and I keep telling people that it has all the same normal coffee characteristics and the botanicals and all the stuff that you come to expect from a normal cup of coffee. Too hot? I don't know yet. <laughs> we'll burn your mouth and spit it out. No, it's great. All right, good deal. Yep. Yeah, we, like Lisa said, we already did a cup of coffee one time, uh, but we wanted to come back to the topic. Uh, go ahead, Lisa, you can kick it off. Yeah, so yeah, first I'm going to talk about the negative side of coffee. There's a um, lot of those. A lot, a lot of negative yeah. side of coffee, which is unfortunate. So not all coffee is created equal. Not That's all right. coffee bean is created equal. Actually, 97% of coffee, coffee beans, are commercially produced. And these are low quality, mass produced and douse the pesticides. Um, and this really has to do with how it's grown. So think about if you're trying to do something for mass production, it, it takes it out of its normal environment from where you're growing the bean, which is typically in like a shaded, you know, tree environment. It doesn't like the sun. Um, and, it, and it grows so nice organically there. But what happens when we go to mass produce, we have to bring it to the fields. Um, it is exposed to sun. So therefore the, the soil is not as, as rich in nutrient. Well, deforestation first. People are now picking out acres and acres sure. of rainforest yeah. to grow a coffee bean and get rid of all the natural shade. Right, which is their natural place to be grown. Yes, yeah. very sad. So um, to because they're not in their natural environment, they also have to be heavily treated. And that's kind of, that's where you enter right. your pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, insecticides. I mean, all this stuff. Anything they can do to keep the plant growing. The, right. Because there's so much demand on the, on the plant, they, they just cover it in chemicals. Yeah. It, it's sad, but I mean, there is such a demand for coffee and this yeah. is how they get around with keeping up with it. So again, 97% yeah. of our coffee is commercially produced. Yeah. That leaves only 3% to be organically grown in the right you know, ecosystem. It, it's, it's pretty crazy. And what I want you to understand is how, um, how horrible for your health these uh, farm chemicals are. You know, from everything from, I mean, shoot, I mean, first of all, it depletes your body of nutrients. They can be cancer causing, they're gut disrupting, their brain, they interfere with your brain. I mean, this is, yeah. and this is something that also we typically consume every day, right? Some people, you know, one to two cups a day. Right. So it's not something that like once in a blue moon you're having and you know it's not an overabundance of toxins that your body can properly exactly. detox it. Because right. um, we're exposed to toxins all the time, right? And if we just minimize them, our body should do exactly what it's supposed to do and detox them. But when we are consuming something like this every single day, we are just pouring toxins Correct. into our body. Right. Um, another thing about uh, the coffee bean, it is one of the, well, if you, I don't know if you've heard of mycotoxins, but mycotoxins are molds. And um, the coffee bean is very common, one of the most common uh, plant compounds to contain mold. Okay. Uh, typically because of how it's how it's grown and environment, it, it's grown yes. and stored in. Yes. 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 So another reason why you want to um, you know purchase organic as well as just know your source. Correct. So important to know your source. And the whole concept of molds is very like true to my heart because I have just come from having mold toxicity. Um, turns out that like 25% of the population does not properly detox mold. So any amount of molds is bad for our bodies. Um, and this is something that you, you're probably sitting there thinking like it would never happen to you, same way that I was. But my symptoms, guys, were I had like joint pain. I had insomnia and night sweats and I developed IBS out of nowhere. And hormonal dysfunction, dysregulation. Right. Yeah. And, and then you're, um, I also wasn't absorbing any nutrients. Right. I mean, as healthy mm -hmm. as I can be, you know, it's like dumbfounded this can actually happen. Yeah. But it was a, a big eye opener. Um, so I, I just want you to think of how um, poisonous mycotoxins are to your body, especially when 
if you're A like me um, and you can't detox them properly, or if you're having an abundance of molds, then your body can't detox this properly at all. Um, there's a big one, arachrotoxin A, OTA. Um, I was just reading a study that 50% it, it, uh, of sample beans contaminated OTA. Uh, it, it's a mycotoxin that develops naturally, mm -hmm. um, but things that, I mean, it can, it affects the kidneys. It is known by the U.S. Um, it's considered a carcinogen. It's an immunosuppressant. Keeps the body from healing, from doing, protecting itself from disease. That was in 50% of coffee beans tested. So I just want you to really understand the, the powerful message that we're trying to convey here about how you have got to know your source and you've got to source your coffee beans organically. It is so easy to run through the drive through Let's go to Dunkin' Donuts, Starbucks. Oh, they make their pumpkin spice. It's so exciting. It's fall. Right. Yes. But think about what you're doing to your body on a regular basis. Um, yeah. So I don't know. But then again, it's not just that we have organic coffee beans. Uh, every ingredient in here, this whole product is certified, USDA is certified organic. And there are so many other beneficial things that we've added to our coffee just to increase the health benefits. And Ryan's going to go into the details about what we added and why. You put so much into that intro. I kind of want to go back and cover <laughs> a few little things there. But you're right. This conversation is, much, much, is as much about making just smart like health choices, right? And drinking shitty coffee is not one of those. It's just not a smart choice. And we drink so much coffee, probably three cups a day, 150 million Americans, billions across the world. So guys, in it, you can get you can get a healthy coffee, like a live good coffee, at an affordable price. It's not that it's so unattainable for most people. It's it's just that most people aren't aware of all the risks right. and the downsides of drinking some of this commercially produced coffee. Right. And while you're talking about price, I'm just going to throw it out there, guys. Okay. Um, for our members, seventeen ninety five. Uh, that's thirty day or thirty servings. That is six, day, yeah, right? just less than sixty cents a for a serving. All right. If you're having more than yeah. one. Um, now the average cup of coffee, going out and purchasing one. I'm just going to use Starbucks as an example again, because it's a very popular one, $5.89. Oh, geez. Okay, yeah, so one? For one. Yeah, yeah. Right. So if you can't, if $17.95 exactly. is too much for you, I mean, and you're going to go to the Folgers, I mean, just think about what you are doing to Exposing your body. Exposing your body to, yeah. And then, like Lisa said, though, so this repeated exposure is the problem because over time, it can cause alterations to your DNA and it can contribute to cancer. So the carcinogenic aspect of some of these mycotoxins and chemicals that are in here, carcinogenic just meaning cancer causing. And so beyond just the mycotoxins, um, you also have things like uh, hydrocarbons, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, which are also known carcinogens. And these things are all done in these commercial, all part of these commercially available products. So it's the over time thing. It's the, it's not just the quick acute exposure. And, and as we age and we continue to, your body has a harder and harder time of defending itself and detoxifying itself. And ultimately potentially can lead to some of this DNA damage that we're talking about. And like Lisa said too, on the, on the immune response, it's affecting the T cells and the way that your immune response, and it causes a lot of dysregulation. So people are definitely not able to say, have the same strong immune system that they should have because they're exposing their body to so many of these toxins. And that's a big, big problem. So making smarter decisions is really kind of unhealthy decisions is what this conversation is all about. So, sure. oh, so all right, let's go talk about products. So we sourced a single bean um, Arabica coffee. It's USA certified organic. It is from Mexico. Um, it has a great, like it's sustainable. It's ethically sourced. We know all of this, we know the source. Uh, and then we wanted to enhance it. So we wanted to take the product up a notch. For a lot of people, caffeine can cause this sympathetic nervous system response or what, what's known as like fight or flight, just feeling of tense and anxious feeling. So we said jitters, jitters and that, yes, thank you. And so then we want to say, look, what's the best way to, to sort of soften that a little bit? And we thought, we think adding some adaptogenic mushrooms to the mix was the right answer. And it has been, the response has been overwhelmingly positive. Mm -hmm. The literature supporting the use of these adaptogenic mushrooms is awesome. There's a lot. So we're going to play a short video. Should we do that now? Do you want to do that now? Yes. Yeah, so um, our mushroom blend that we have added into our uh, coffee is Peak O2. And it's a blend of seven, six. Six, six, six mushrooms. Six mushrooms. Cordyceps, reishi, which reishi is the Ganoderma, king trumpet, lion's mane, shiitake, turkey tail, 
So it's 1,000 milligrams. So one gram of the blend of these. Um, so that's that's the Pico 2 brand, and we're very proud of that. It's yes. an awesome. Yeah, function. and that's what we want to show you. We just want to pull up their website and play just their intro video because, um, you know, it's a powerful uh, patented ingredient. I mean, we're, we're very proud of it. So uh, I have sent this their website out to some, um, you know, you guys that have emailed me and asked me certain questions about uh, the Pico 2. So uh, we're going to. Yeah, let's do it. it. I'm gonna I'm gonna stream the video. It's about a minute and a half. It's uh very quick. So yeah, quick to the point. Yeah, we'll just get we'll get that going here in just a sec. There we go. Hopefully the sound works. My name is Sandra Carter. I'm the founder of M2 Ingredients. Uh, here in Carlsbad, where we grow 11 species of mushrooms in a certified organic GMP, very high quality facility here. Um, so Pico 2, how did we get to Pico 2? So we were looking to develop a product that really enhanced endurance. So we uh, import organic gluten-free oats from Saskatchewan, Canada, and we uh, grow mushrooms through through their full life cycle, which can take anywhere from five weeks to more than three months, depending on the species of mushrooms. And we grow them in a totally contained environment, so we control the temperature, the airflow, and what's really important about that is so you get a consistent, reliable product with really good efficacy in it. And so at the end of the growing stage, we um, dehydrate the mushrooms at low temperatures to retain all the enzymes and vitamins vitamins and proteins, and then we mill it into a powder. And of course, it's, it's tested by several third-party labs. We test everything for heavy metals, of course, for pesticides, for microbiologicals and, and pathogens as well. And so once everything is tested, then it's released by our quality team. All right, guys, so we're back. So I think that's pretty informative. I think that's a lot of helpful information for people. Yep. And again, it's just, a, you know, an ingredient that we are very proud of to have in our coffee. Yeah. And, you know, just in all in all, the healing power of, of mushrooms. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Okay. All right. So, and then in addition to the, so the adaptogenic mushrooms, we said we want to do, I'm oh, sorry. I spun this thing sideways. Sorry for the technical difficulties. We're trying out new, new ways of doing this. Yeah, there we go. Um, so we added maca, actually. Maca is uh, it's a cruciferous vegetable. It's in the same family as your broccoli and your cauliflower. It's, uh, it's great for mood. It's great for libido. It's great for stamina, for energy. So it made perfect sense to include that in this formula as well, as well as the green tea extract, which is high in antioxidants. We didn't talk about that, but the coffee, high in, in, in phytonutrients, uh, polyphenols, flavonoids. These are antioxidants, and they've been shown to be very, very beneficial for our health. So another reason to have that awesome compound in the mix as well. So a lot of the benefits of coffee that we talk about though, Lisa, they're like cognition, there's mood enhancement, there's stimulation, there's energy, and it's also considered a thermogenic. So there's some buzz going around, what's thermogenic? Well, thermogenic, it just means that it puts off heat and it's a way of increasing our basal metabolic rate. So it can, it can contribute to a healthy weight loss program if you're obviously looking at the foods you're taking in and of course your exercise and your output as well. So, um, but by itself, a thermogenic just can help with raising your basal metabolic Great. Now, it will not by itself have profound weight loss. That's not the point. But again, in, in combination with other healthy habits, it can, of course, be part of that. So right. uh, cognition, we said, and whatever. I mean, there's a lot. There's right. a lot there. A and lot there. Uh, fiber? Oh, yeah, sure. Sorry. We added soluble fiber because we wanted to create a sense of satiety. So, so give you a sense of the body's full. It's not so hungry. Um, and that's just part of that healthy weight loss. And plus, it can balance the absorption of nutrients. It can slow down the, the transit time of the stomach a little bit. So it just has a nice, healthy, fulfilling. That's what satiety usually means, fulfilling mm -hmm. feeling to it. Um, it obviously doesn't totally suppress appetite, but it ha does play a role in that. So again, going back to that healthy balance of for if you're looking for weight loss, it can this can be definitely a valuable tool. Right. And one of the greatest things about it is just the fact that it does help you feel full and also with the mushrooms combating that little bit of that jittery, especially if you're having like it on an empty stomach. Yeah. When you drink this first thing in the morning, guys, um, now there's only 10 calories to it. There's no sugars or anything added. So it essentially does not break a fast. But you drink this and it really helps extend that more 
morning period before yeah. you know you, you need to eat. So I know a lot of us do intermittent fasting yeah. and it really, really, really helps with that. Yeah, exactly. I get a lot of questions on how much caffeine. There's 100 milligrams of caffeine per serving. And then the flavor is a natural espresso flavor. Okay, so it's actually espresso. It's a real natural flavor. Right. For those that ask. Right. And to go along with the um, 100 milligrams of caffeine, I do get the common question is how many scoops going to have a day? Right. It, it's equivalent to a cup of coffee. So if you're a two cup drinker, have two scoops a day. Yeah. Um, we don't really advise, I mean, you know, too much caffeine is not a good thing. And especially not past 10 a.m. or noon. Right. Or latest. We don't want to interfere with our sleep. Right. And even if you're one of those, my parents are like this, I think they can have a cup of coffee at five o'clock in the afternoon to kind of like, finish out the day right. um, and then they fall asleep. That's fine. But their sleep, um, what's going on in their sleep cycles is not good. Right. So just because you can fall asleep doesn't mean the caffeine is not affecting you and, and your sleep. So we always recommend the earlier part of the day, maybe one to three cups max, just or scoops max, just because of the caffeine content. Yeah. Um, yeah. Other questions that were coming. Yeah, oh, the fruity body. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, did she not talk about that in the video there? Uh, it is grown from the fruity body of the mushroom. Yeah. yeah. So we do get that um, question often.